ABC Championship game and Charlotte will take on Pitt. Who came up short today, 8 p.m. on ABC. And South Carolina will play another home game. The makeup will play Akron at home next week. And here come the Gamecocks point right here. You want to peek at the right time, and here he is. First down and 10 from the 25, and the place is buzzing. They banged out the building tonight in Clemson. Quick feed to Debo Samuel. He is the playmaker. But there is a flag down, and we'll check the marker five seconds in. Uh, referee's Before Matt Loughlin. the snap, ball start. Offense, number 79, five-yard penalty, first down. And that is Dylan Wadham. They start a true freshman at right tackle, South Carolina does. Well, you mentioned Jake Bentley, Steve, coming into this game. He's playing his best football of his career in South Carolina. This team has won four of the last six games. And a lot of it has to do with the way that Jake Bentley and his offense have been producing in an efficient fashion. And hearing it from the crowd early. In-state rivalry game. Hard to see any South Carolina fans in the building. It's all orange tonight. On first and 15, on the ground, Amon Denson trying to turn the corner for a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Tanner Muse came up to make the stop. Carolina has gotten their momentum going on offense, but they have not faced a defense as complete as Clemson. Yes, they played some good defenses in Georgia, in Florida, but neither, neither of those teams have this complete defense as Clemson does. Jake Bentley throwing to Debo Samuel, and he's got the first down. Kayvon Wallace made the stop. The McShay matchup tonight from Chick-fil-A. The matchup for me is on the perimeter. If Bentley's going to have a good night tonight, it's going to be because he's getting the ball in his playmaker's hands. Debo Samuel, Brian Edwards. Edwards, a big physical receiver. Samuel, the dynamic playmaker, going up against Clemson corners, A.J. Terrell and Trayvon Mullen. Uh, Chick-fil-A impact players tonight. Debo Samuel, well, that was good for 15 yards. Bentley hangs in there and throws one middle of the field and is caught. Big completion to Shai Smith. And a good start for South Carolina out of the penalty marker. Brent Venables decides to come with no safety in the middle of the field. That leaves it wide open for the post route to Shai Smith. Great job by Bentley holding as long as he can to make the throw. Christian Wilkins put a lick on Bentley at the end of the play. That was a gain of 29 yards. And things will settle down now with the Gamecocks on the move. Mon Denson had a hamstring injury early in the season. He's thought to be more of a short yardage guy. Really has been forced to do a bigger role because they have so many injuries. Different formation here. Carolina has taken two offensive linemen out of the formation. Second down and four on the ground to Denson. And that'll go, maybe they'll give him a yard in the forward progress. Isaiah Simmons came up to make the tackle and bring a third down. You don't see that formation every day. I think what you're going to see from Brian McClendon, the offensive coordinator, he realizes that they're at a disadvantage on their offensive line against this defensive line. So they're going to have to mix in some of these variables, maybe some trick plays to get production moving the ball down the field tonight. Bentley throwing and completing a shy Smith and he's got the first down Bentley looks cool and calm gain of eight yeah you know leaves I think everybody loves to talk about Debo Samuel and, and Brian Edwards but I think shy Smith goes very underrated for this team he's reliable Jake Bentley has a good rapport with him he's got 31 catches now on the season and he has become a very reliable receiver first down and ten and on the move at the Clemson 21. Good pocket for Bentley. Looked right and threw to his left to his back. Denson out of the backfield of the going complete. First incompletion for Bentley of the game. We'll see how Brent Venables decides to play here in this red zone fringe area. We've already seen him be aggressive. Try to blitz, come after Jake Bentley, and he gave up the post route. The last three or four snaps, he's played a more vanilla zone looks. That's not his M.O. He likes to bring pressure and play man-to-man. -man. But so far, it's hurt him in this drive. Another really 
zone look from Clemson. On the ground, Denson again. He'll fall forward for a couple. Christian Wilkins in there as usual to make the stop. It's going to be so hard for Carolina to run the ball between the tackles tonight. I mean, we, we know, you know that coming into the game, that you're not going to just block Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins and Farrell and all these guys on a consistent basis. So you have to have some plays in here for Debo Samuel in the run game on the perimeter, I believe. Ninth play of this drive. Third down and seven. We got a zone look with Debo Samuel on a linebacker here. That's Joseph. Bentley's looking that way. In some trouble. And a marker comes out. Tried to hook up with Chavis Dawkins. And we'll check the flag. Offside on the defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's Cleveland Furl getting flagged. The officials, if you were curious, are from the SEC here tonight. This brings up for, for Carolina, it brings up the opportunity to run the football in this short yardage situation, third and two. You got the whole playbook at your disposal. Bentley to throw for it. Setting up the screen to Denson. And he just has it, I think. That's a big time catch by Denson. That ball was kind of a little bit high. He had to catch it over his helmet, it looked like. They only gained a couple of yards here, but it's a first down. And this is not an easy catch right there over your head like that. Well done by Denson to pick up a first down. And the drive continues. Two big studs in that middle of that Clemson front. Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins will step out. They're going to go for a measurement here. Looked like he had to get to the 11-yard line. You know, the yellow line is unofficial. Still, I'm looking at the <laughs> chains. I can't see the yellow line. <laughs> it's a first down. I took my kids to an NFL game. They're like, where's the yellow line? <laughs> but that's the kids today, right? They're young. Give them a break. Yeah. Hey, Dad, where's the yellow line? I can't see the yellow line on the field. I never have gotten out of the habit as an old quarterback. I look over to the sideline to the sticks. That's just what I do. Dexter Lawrence and Krusty Wilkins are back in there. So they move the chains. That's the fourth first down of this drive. The other benefit of this is keeping that Clemson offense off the field. Rice, Rico Dowdle has checked in. Here's Bentley under pressure, got a jersey pull, and he'll just throw it away. Austin Bryant had the pressure, and he was trying to yank Bentley down. That's going to be a matchup to, to watch. Austin Bryant on the true freshman, Wanham, and that time it's just speed around the edge. Wanham's going to be a good player, but he's 315 pounds, and as a true freshman, he hasn't seen the kind of speed consistently. Quick throw to Shai Smith for a couple. A.J. Terrell making the stop, bring up a third down. And as good as this drive has been, now the 13th play of the drive, and this is the tough area of the field to score on Clemson. They just do not give up touchdowns. You see, they haven't given up any points in the last eight quarters. Third down and eight. They're bringing the linebackers through the middle. Nice job by Bentley Audible. Here comes that pressure right up the middle of Bentley. And he got rid of it into the end zone for the touchdown. Debo Samuel for the score. That is the first touchdown allowed by Clemson in the first quarter this entire season. For 
Parker White on for the extra point. On the way, and it is good. A most impressive start for the Gamecocks. Maybe this is as good as you can do it from the quarterback position. This blitz is coming. He knows it's coming. Watch Jake Bentley. Give ground, give ground, give ground. And then right here, he's got pressure. And he has to find a window to get that into Debo Samuel. That is as good as you can do it at the quarterback position under tremendous pressure. Well done, Jake Bentley. Bentley goes six for eight on the drive. 65 yards and the first score of the night. So an impressive scoring drive by South Carolina. Has them up on top of Clemson. Seven to nothing. Will Tommy will kick it away. And we'll get our first look at Trevor Lawrence and that explosive Clemson offense. They actually lead the nation in explosive plays. Darian Kendrick is back deep. He'll let it bounce in and out of the end zone. I mentioned Trevor Lawrence. That kid's a winner. 52-2 and two in high record that Trevor Lawrence sets. I'm really looking forward to watching him play in this game. You know, he's, he's had an unbelievable season, but rivalry games are just a little bit different. Probably a little bit of nerves, butterflies. See how he handles it. On the ground, Travis Etienne got him to a slow start. A week ago, they get three there, did some pouting on the sideline, and there's the best news for Clemson tonight, the return of Hunter Renfro. We were told he was checked out for a concussion, left last week's game early, and here he is again to play, to continue to uh, break and set some more Clemson wide receiver records. Good on Hunter Renfro. Here's ETN back in the game for a second carry. And it'll bring up a third down. Short Chick-fil-A and back players here for Shea. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the perimeter here, Steve. I, I think these receivers for Clemson, one of the deepest groups in the country. T. Higgins, Justin Ross are the two names you're probably going to hear the most tonight. Higgins a big target. Ross is really emerging as a freshman. Going up against these corners, Rashad Fenton, Keyshawn Nixon. We will watch for that. Here's a third down and three from the 32. That's Renfro in the slot. This is his spot. They love him here. Lawrence to throw for the first time tonight. And underneath, who else? Captain third down, Hunter Renfro across midfield. Runs right through the logo. And it's bounced down. Listen to the ovation. For the graduate senior, Hunter Renfro, game of 21. Look at you right on cue, calling out a third down to Hunter Renfro. Well done. You know, a couple more years hanging around with you, Grease. <laughs> I'm starting to pick some stuff up. Fake to ETN. Out of the flat, T. Higgins. You know, it's crazy to me. Everyone in the building, including, including you, Steve, knows that he's going, they're going to the slot receiver Renfro on third downs, and yet I, I just don't understand why there's not more press coverage. Even bring a safety over and get help. You've got to take him away on third downs. That's a great point. Easier said than done. Everybody knows it's coming. Here's Amari Rogers. On uh, the quick screen of the receiver. One of, one of the challenges as to why you can't play man to man on Hunter Renfro if you're South Carolina, all the injuries. They have nine players on the defensive side of the ball that are out for this game. You see at every level, this defense has been decimated with injuries. The defensive line, linebackers, Bryson Allen Williams continues to be out. So they have their hands full with this offense tonight. Second down and seven. On the ground, ETN spinning around for a first down yardage. I mentioned a slow start that ETN got off to last week. He had his first five carries for four yards, headed to the sideline, and was really upset. And then the players got to him, I guess the coaching staff got to him as well, and he certainly turned it on. Averaged 0 0.8 yards per carry in the first half last week, and the second half averaged nine yards per carry. Had two big touchdown runs on the way. 27 and 29 yards to blow things open against Duke on first down and 10 from the Carolina 13 Lawrence a throw gets some late pressure has ETN out of the backfield underneath 
Keyshawn Nixon made the stop. Be a second down. I see pretty early in this game, Trevor Lawrence with a little bit of patience. He wanted to get that ball to Renfro. He was double covered in the end zone. He goes to a second and third read, throws the ball in the flat to ETN, and brings up a manageable situation here on second and short. Tavian Feaster. They're going to mark him short of the goal line. But he has the first down. And it will be a first and goal from inside the one. Great sign for this offensive line up front. Especially right guard Gage Srivanka. He's been inserted in that starting position the last month. Coming off the football here inside the five-yard line. Feaster trying to crash to the line. Can't get there. Josh Belk in the middle. And R.J. Roderick there to make sure of that stop. Nice job by Brad Johnson as well, Steve. Coming off the edge. He's going to play a lot of snaps. No D.J. Wanham, no Aaron Sterling on the outside. So Brad Johnson, the buck position has fallen on his lap. Really nice job on that last play. Second down and goal. Good look from our sky cam. Feaster again. This time he's got it. Touchdown. And who's the first guy on the field to celebrate? It's the defensive tackle, Christian Wilkins. Just can't keep Wilkins off the field. And we're an extra point away from the tie game. An impressive answer from Clemson. South Carolina came to play tonight offensively. They go right down the field, and Clemson comes right back with a 10-play drive of their own, doing a lot of it on the ground with ETN. Here's Greg Hugel on for the extra point. And just like that, we're all nodded at seven. Right away on a key third down. Hunter Renfro involved. One of the big plays leading to the touchdown. As well, the Saturday night, Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina. Final home game of the season. These Tigers, they got big plans, big plans. BT Potter puts it in the air. And this will go for a touchback. And second possession for each team coming up. The first, here's Adnan Burke. All right, Steve, thank you very much. DirecTV, more for your college football thing. It's the Territorial Cup. Arizona State taking on Arizona. Down 19, they were at one point. Eno Benjamin, 22-yard touchdown run. They went for two, didn't get it. Arizona, 45-yard field goal here. Down by one. The kick is wide right. We've got drama everywhere. Steve Levy, back to you. All right, Adnan, thank you. And it'll keep you posted on everything else going on around college football on a busy, busy, important night as flags fly everywhere. False start. Offense, number 74, five-yard penalty, first down. Dennis Daly, the senior from Columbia. Second false start on South Carolina. That's how they came out of the opening touchback. And Will Muschamp has really been excited about the way Jake Bentley has played since he missed the Missouri game. He has been on fire. You see, much more efficient throwing the football. He has to protect the ball continuing tonight. Here's Bentley to throw. Hitting six of his first eight. Completes another one. That's Shy Smith on the receiving end. His fourth catch for the underrated Shy Smith. I was wondering how Jake Bentley would come out and play in this game. It has not gone well for him the last couple of years against Clemson. Bentley looks downfield, then goes underneath to Dowdle. Isaiah Simmons, another tackle for him, and a bring up a third down. Now they lost 34 to 10 last year, but it was 34 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Clemson was up. It was a beatdown. So you wonder. The South Carolina believe, really believe, they can come into Death Valley and beat the number two team in the country. So far, the signs are good for them. Well, two years ago, they lost here 56 to 7. Here's third and seven.
Belly to throw for with pressure in his face. Able to unload and complete it. Shy Smith again. His fifth grab, and they'll move the sticks, Todd. Well, the thing that really has impressed me early on with Bentley is that he's hanging in the pocket. You see the pressure coming in his face. He doesn't back down, stares down the gun barrel, and is able to deliver the first down. Todd, great job by the right guard, Hutcherson, there to block Wilkins. Again, it's Shai Smith. Oh, takes a big pounding by A.J. Terrell. Terrell was not messing around there, sending a message. These are the kinds of hits in rivalry games that set the tone. <laughs> Look both, both guys, they don't want to yeah. hit their heads, right? right? Because you get, a, you get a penalty there, so they're hitting their bodies. Looked like Smith thought he was going to hand out some punishment there. And he was on the receiving end. Six catches, 61 yards so far for Shai Smith. Here's second down and eight. This one has a good feel to it tonight. Here comes pressure. Blitz is not picked up. Bentley gets rid of it. And in the neighborhood of Debo Samuel. Chalked that one up to Brett Venables. He got Jake Bentley on that one. Bentley was not anticipating that blitz. And the, the line, linebacker was not picked up. And there was no hot receiver for Bentley to go through. He was very fortunate to be able to buy some time and get rid of that football. Bring up a third down and eight. And this is the third incompletion so far for Bentley. And as you see, that Clemson front, that's an NFL front. And they are among the leaders in the nation in tackles for losses and sacks. And they're going to bring in Xavier Thomas, the true freshman, to rush on the right tackle, the freshman. Here's Bentley. Nowhere to go. Austin Bryant was there first. And a sack to the season total for the Tigers. It's an embarrassment of riches for Clemson when they get in this third down package. They bring in four elite pass rushers, and this time Bryant gets matched up on the tight end, Kyle Markway, and that's a no match for Bryant. And we'll get our first punt of the night, Joseph Charlton from his own 30. One of the best punters in the nation. Maury Rogers will let it bounce. And it's going to be down at the three-yard line. Keenan Nixon in the perfect spot. Decisions you make in a day, but we were told South Carolina would have seven, seven game-time decisions on defense coming in tonight. And there's one decision that was made. Yeah, J.C. Horn, the true freshman who was an integral part of this secondary, tried to go out in warm-ups and was just not able to go, so they're... Even more shorthand than we thought. Trevor Lawrence and this Clemson offense, they are backed up. And they'll Travis Etienne, and they're pushing the pile out to the 11-yard line. Daniel Fennell made the tackle. You know, J.C. Horn, they're really excited about him. He's the Joe Horn's son, obviously. There he got dressed out and tried to go. You see that big, heavy wrap on his left foot and ankle. And uh, I think it was the right decision because he could not move in pregame well enough to get out and play. Hurt his ankle on the first play last week. They destroyed the Mox 49 to 9. It was Lawrence rolling to his right, surveying the field and dumping it off to the completion for T. Higgins to catch. And it's a first down. Noticeable difference in the start out of Trevor Lawrence from last week to this week. He starts off perfect 5-5. Five five. Seemed a bit off the mark last week. Was not helped out by a bunch of drops. And some misses. Here's Justin Ross on the completion. Got blockers in front of him all the way down the field. Justin Falsinelli providing the escort. Gain of 26. Justin Ross, as we talked about earlier, is really emerging as a big-time playmaker. He's a vertical weapon, a guy who can create after the catch as well. You see here the speed, the quickness, and also some vision in the open field. I'm impressed with Ross as a freshman. Yeah, you know, Todd, I think the, the thing last week, nine drops from this Clemson team, and they got a talking to in practice, so a good sign for them. They're securing the football early. Here's Etienne right up the middle. Be very close to another first down. Keir Thomas made the stop. 
You mentioned the drops crease last week. Dabo told us, according to his count, nine drops. But Lawrence missed on six throws. He said that's 15 plays. I did the math for you. You can complete half of those, and it's a whole different story. Well, it's the, one of the most explosive offenses in college football. So if you have 15 more connections, that's 15 more opportunities, obviously, to be explosive. Well, you're not going to get them all. In the summer. Here's Renfro. Another first down inside of the 40. And the Tigers are humming here on offense in their second possession tonight. There's no question that this offense is the most dangerous when they are running the football and then off of that run game they're throwing the ball well last week they didn't run it well enough in the first half against Duke and that's why they sputtered but they've got both the run and pass game going early here you said in the break that the first Clemson touchdown drive was a little too easy and they're moving down the field here again with some ease Lawrence will look to his left and throw to his right to Feaster he stays on his feet they'll drag a few white jerseys with him Close to another first down. So we come up on the final minute of quarter number one. And really, your only hope, if you're Will Muschamp, is you got to try to get some turnovers, try to steal some possessions, because you're not going to consistently be able to stop Clemson, especially with all these injuries. So guys like in the secondary have to be ripping at that football when Etienne and others come in into the second level. Second down and three. Lawrence is yet to miss tonight. And there it is, his first miss, looking for T. Higgins. Turnovers have been a problem for South Carolina, Greece. They rank 111th in the country. They're minus three for the season. That's just one of the problems for Will Muschamp and company in his third year, and they've shown a lot of progress this season. They have, and all four losses this year have been to teams that are currently ranked in the top 25. Uh, so there have been no slouches, but he certainly needs a signature win. It's called third and two and a half. Here's Lawrence. He's going to run for it. Takes a shot. Picks up a few more extra yards. Sherrod Green put the lick on Lawrence. Ten-yard gain as we hit the final half minute of the quarter. And Keir Thomas is still down on the ground. You want to make a big living taking these kinds of hits. You like the toughness from your quarterback, but you also want him to be smart. And Keir Thomas, uh, one another defensive end on the ground for Carolina. NFL countdown before facing Aaron Rodgers. Viking safety Harris Smith goes one on one with all pro safety Darren Woods and our guy Woody. Monday night, we've got a big AFC battle. Deshaun Watson and the Texans take on the Titans. That's our Monday night football matchup this week. Here's Lawrence. Right to his right and throwing it across his body and could not hook up with Cannon Smith who has three catches on the season, looking for a fourth. Boy, true freshman R.J. Roderick, the safety diagnosed it perfectly. He just didn't make the play. You see him come in late there. He saw it, he read it, knew he was throwing back on that weak side seam, just didn't get there in time. So Lawrence started eight of eight, and he's missed on his last two throws. 21 ticks left in the quarter, tied at seven. Lawrence to throw again, 6-1 in there. This one is caught for the score. T. Higgins, and the Tigers on top. <laughs> 22 yards for the score. How do you like those 95-yard scoring drives? <laughs> Remember they were backed up all the way to the five. Roar down the field as Tigers often do. Ten plays, three minutes and 19 seconds. And Greg Hugel benefits from kicking a lot of extra points. Oh, bunch on the snap there on the hold, I beg your pardon. Will Sweeney had some problems putting that football down. And Hugel, the fifth-year senior, able to get it through. At 6'4", 210 pounds, T. Higgins is a, a nightmare on the outside, and he runs these routes. He's inside, breaking seam routes, and this ball thrown perfectly by Trevor Lawrence, but that is almost impossible to stop when you're that accurate with the football, and young Trevor Lawrence, watch him feel this. After he gets this touchdown, he looks right at South Carolina's bench, yes. right at Will Muschamp. Hey, welcome to the rivalry, kid. Well, we talked about 
Trevor Lawrence coming in as a freshman, first time playing in this game, undefeated, record on the line right now, and was he going to have some nerves early on? I haven't seen any. He, he's really been poised and got off to a really fast start so far. Uh, I, I love to see that from a quarterback, right? When you have the confidence to rear back and fire that missile for a touchdown and then look right at the opposing bench, you love that confidence in your quarterback. It's like Dabo enjoyed it as well. 17 seconds left. Again, there, there's more than one Sweeney in this game. Will Sweeney is the holder. So you see he had some problem. Bit of a low snap, I guess, and then good composure by Will, the sophomore, to put it down. Yeah, great job by Heidel, the kicker, to stay with it. On a, on a day full of emotions, by the way, send your condolence tweets to at Brian Greasy. He's been walking around like a like someone <laughs> stole his puppy ever since about 3.45 p.m. Eastern time. Imagine Joey Tough might get goal. into that at halftime. Tough goal. Yeah. Well, you hung around in the first quarter. <laughs> All right. Jake Bentley to throw, and we'll see if South Carolina has an answer. For that Clemson 95-yard scoring drive, which, which ties their longest scoring drive of the season. Well, and for nothing else, that uh, South Carolina needs to give their defense a break. You mentioned 95 yards. The last thing you want to do is go three and out and put them right back on the field. A couple of 10-play drives. They will get the benefit at the end of the quarter. Ball is tipped and caught by Shai Smith. His seventh grab already. Seven catches in the first quarter. Shai Smith. And it's going to be one of those nights because they're not going to be able to run the ball consistently between the tackles. So they've got to throw those quick screens and quick throws to Samuel and Smith in the slot. So that will do it. For quarter Xfinity Skycam coverage of the game, streaming live on the ESPN app and on Xfinity X1. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, and our outstanding crew. Wishing you all a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. Football, food, family, in whatever order you so choose. Here's Debo Samuel being walked backwards by Kendall Joseph and a host of Tigers. Be interesting to see how the offensive coordinator Brian McClendon for South Carolina chooses to use tempo here. You know that they want to go up tempo and keep Clemson's defensive front out there and try to tire them out. But the problem is you can't go so fast that you put your defense at risk. Here's Bentley with all sorts of time, able to complete to Brian Edwards. Edwards stays on his feet and is lassoed down at the end by Denzel Johnson for Brian Edwards. That's his 36th consecutive game with a reception. That's every game of his South Carolina career. Uh, Clemson is very familiar with Brian Edwards. They would have loved to have him here in Death Valley, but he decided to go to South Carolina, and he's been one of the best receivers in the SEC, in my opinion, this season. A big, strong target for Jake Bentley. On first down and 10, across midfield, Mon Denson, the ball carrier. Stop by Cleveland Furl. Denson is one of a host of running backs. It is a running back group by committee. You'd like to have one guy stand out. But due to injuries and different kinds of abilities, they've gone with a host of running backs. What a catch through traffic. Amazing that Brian Edwards able to come up with that grab. And amazing that Tanner Muse didn't intercept that ball. He was in position. I don't think he could pick the ball up out of the hand of Bentley. That's why he missed it. I'd like to see that one again. Well, let's try to get that done for you. Well, I ask and you shall receive. There you go. Look at Muse, 19. He's playing that linebacker position. He reads it. Just misses. It looked like it may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Muse knows. He knows. Redshirt Jr. Belmont, North Carolina. Another one of those Clemson Tigers. Feels like he's been here forever. <laughs> Off the play fake. Bentley faked it to Denson, then throws it to him. Mom Denson on the receiving end for a gain of 13. Really 
nice awareness from Jake Bentley, knowing where all his receivers are. He wanted to throw that ball to the left. Nobody was there. He was getting pressure, and he quickly turned, and his head went right to his fourth receiver, the running back. First down and 10. Bentley to throw for it. And let's see if a flag comes out, and it does. Chavis Dawkins is being held back by Trayvon Mullen. See if that's a holding or a pass interference, but you get the idea. Yeah, they're going to get Mullen. He clearly was holding Dawkins. If he didn't, this may have been a touchdown. Pass interference on the defense, number one. That's a spot foul with an automatic first down. Talked about Edwards and a player that Clemson would have liked to have gotten. Clemson actually got his grandfather. So there were type of bloodlines in there, and he still passed and went to Columbia instead. First down a goal. Inside the five. Pressure coming at Bentley. Throws to the back of the end zone. Debo Samuel was there. So too was Isaiah Simmons. Really nice job by A.J. Terrell on the outside. This is just that sprint out play that we see every college team run. And if you're playing man-to-man -man coverage, it's difficult to, to guard it. But Terrell stayed outside and took away that easy throw and forced Bentley to throw the football away. Second down and goal. At the Clemson three. That man-to-man with any of these receivers that Jake Bentley wants to throw to. One clap, hands the football to Denson. Maybe a yard or two. Kendall Joseph was the first man to make the taunt contact and then got some help from his friends. Third down and goal upcoming. Yeah, and Kendall Joseph has had the luxury of guys like Lawrence and Wilkins up front. They get double teamed on almost every play, and Joseph is the one that gets to run free on the second level. They're getting no movement up, up front on the offensive line for South Carolina, which you had to expect against this great defensive line, but if they're gonna get it done, it's gotta be through the air down here. Yeah, Todd, down here especially, it becomes difficult to throw the ball because the windows are tightened down and they can't run it. And difficult to hear as well. There's five on the play clock, and Will Muschamp. First charge timeout. Take his first South Carolina. timeout. We'll come back, third and goal. Whatever you said was clever. <laughs> I look forward to seeing it on when I watch the game back on DVR. I prefer not to hear what Joey has to say anyway. <laughs> third down and three. Man to man down here with Edwards. Third and goal from the three. Denson is the single setback behind Bentley. Out of the timeout. Here's Bentley, lofts one. And he and Shai Smith could not connect. Smith was looking to his right, and the throw went to his left. I understand why you targeted Isaiah Simmons, right? He's a converted safety, and you get Shai Smith one-on-one -on, -one on him, but that's a difficult throw. How about this call? South Carolina admitting they didn't come here for a haircut. They came to win the game. Kick the field goal. Take the points. That's where Will Muschamp disagrees. Here's fourth and goal from the three. Blitz is picked up. Bentley throws back in the end zone, and it's through the hands of Brian Edwards. And the Tigers' defense holds. Get it. You come in, you want to be aggressive. You're in a hostile territory and a rivalry game, but you also have to be smart. You, you have an opportunity to stay in this football game, take the points. This is not an easy defense to convert against, and that play really had no chance. And that throw, while it did go through Edwards' hands, I'm not sure he would have come down with one foot in bounds anyway. But South Carolina's clearly thinking field goals are not going to beat Clemson in this place here tonight. And they're taking a shot. And now they find themselves on defense. And Clemson with a long field in front of them. From their own three, this drive will start with Tavian Feaster. Again, we've already seen a 95-yard drive 
for Clemson that tied their season long. And so a chance to, uh, to set a new record for this season, starting at their own three. And right off the bat, South Carolina's offense has had two sustained drives, one of 12 plays, and now that one was another 11 plays, but all for not on that last drive. on the receiving end. Daniel Fennell made the stop. Looked like Lawrence got had to throw through his own player there. As you see some of the numbers from this game. The yards very close. Time of possession to this point. Advantage South Carolina. Been a really well played game so far. You know, sometimes these emotional games you wonder in the first quarter if there's nerves. But uh, this has been a really well played game so far. Both quarterbacks playing well. But Lawrence got really close to Feaster, so that throw it through Feaster. Out to Rogers that time. Here's third down and three, taking a shot down the sideline, and it's caught. T. Higgins at the 40, and a flag comes in late. Let's see if he got Higgins for the push-off. T. Higgins now in his sophomore year is really blossoming into a big-time wide receiver for Clemson. And knowing where they're Pass going. Interference on the defense, number five. That penalty. First down. It's number nine. That's Keyshawn Nixon who got flagged. Correction, number nine on the penalty. Number nine on the penalty. Obviously listening to our broadcast. I was just going to say, knowing where Clemson wants to go at the end of this season, they're going to need T. Higgins. They're going to need Justin Ross to go up and make physical plays like that with some of the defenses that you're going to see in the playoff. And that was on a third and three grease. Now it's going for the first down, trying to get a, a big chunk play there. And it's first down and ten. Plenty of breathing room again on a drive that started from their own three. Lawrence wants more. Throws and completes to Justin Ross. Took a pretty good shot at the 46 of South Carolina from Stephen Montak. Boy, what a luxury for Lawrence to have these two receivers. Now as a true freshman, Ross, that is very well done from a concentration standpoint, knowing you're going to get hit by that safety and still bringing that ball in. On first down and ten. That's Feaster. Right up the gut into the heart of that South Carolina defense. They've softened them up in the middle because they've been passed into the outside. Gain of 16 on the plate. Move the chains and they'll keep on moving on first and 10. Here's Feaster again, that soft underbelly of the Gamecocks defense. Well, one of the most underappreciated players on this Clemson offense is Garrett Williams, the H-back. But on back-to-back -back plays, number 44 inserts into the hole, blocks the linebacker, and allows Feaster to get to the second level. Second down and two. Try to gain the edge and the first down. The yard to gain line, and he got it. And we'll move the sticks again. Clemson on the move inside the red zone. South Carolina has another defender down on the ground. I have not seen a team in college football to have these kinds of injuries on one punishment for the stunt. How did they let those kids get away with that? <laughs> They look like the football players. Must not I, I have been guess, a very good year. For guess, <laughs> right. Well, actually, it was not a good year at that point. So, uh, a little Greek life. ETM the ball carrier. The flag comes in late. Sherrod Green has replaced Damani Staley, who was injured prior to our break. Look like they're going to get a hands to the face on defense. Maybe on Javon Kinlaw. Personal foul, hands to the face, number three on the defense. Half the distance, first down. Javon Kinlaw. He was locked up with John Simpson, the left guard, and just trying to finish the, the play and got his hands up around the face. And puts uh, the South Carolina defense in a hole. Here's number three. That's an easy call. First down and goal. 
Yeah, this drive started from their own three-yard line. It's ETN inside the five-yard line. The next touchdown rushing that Travis Etienne scores will be his 18th of the season. That will set a new single-season record for a Clemson running back. I imagine he's aware of that. So, too, probably is Dabo. He knows everything going on with this program. On the ground, Etienne not going to get there. Third down and goal, Kobe Smith came up to make the stop. Smith, one of the guys... Coach calls a glue guy. And here come the big fellas. <laughs> that was the excitement from the crowd. Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins are in there. The fridge package. <laughs> so I don't think ETN's going to get this rushing touch. And they have, now they have gone play fake to these guys and thrown for the score before. Let's see what they do here. On the ground. Give it to Christian Wilkins doesn't get there how about that somebody made a business decision Rick Sandage the <laughs> freshman from Concord North Carolina well if you're gonna bring the fridge package in right with 340 pounds and 315 pounds you better have somebody like Sandage who weighs 290 himself to stand stand him up and how about this Dabo says you can go for it I'll go for it fourth and goal Pitch to Wilkins with momentum into the end zone for the touchdown. Christian Wilkins will not be denied on the second attempt. to the big fella with the big smile on his face he got stood up on the previous play so you pitch it to him and let him show his athleticism how about the, the Heisman pose too <laughs> <laughs> he's got ball skills after the score unsportsmanlike conduct number 42 on Clemson that penalty being forced on the kickoff that is number 42's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game the touchdown is good so Wilkins is definitely filling up the stat sheet in every way. Well, look at Dabo. Dabo's not happy about it. No, he's hot. No, he is not happy about it. I, I thought he might let him go. He took him off the field goal team, brought him over on the sideline just to talk to him, which is not a good look in your last game playing in, in this stadium. Wow. Extra point. All the way and good. So really, in a matter of seconds, it's all smiles and a big party for Wilkins. And Dabo's high five and dancing on the sideline. Then it quickly turns. Here's Wilkins for the score. And he pushes away and does, does the pose, which, you know, you know Dabo, Dabo's about the team. I, I don't have a problem with that. But Dabo Sweeney, he is the author of the culture here. There's yes. nobody else. Uh, and he didn't like it, and he's going to tell, no matter who you are, right. he's going to tell you about it. And, and Christian Wilkins is his best player on his entire team, and he just dressed him down on the sideline in front of everybody. Uh, on national TV, and I'm sure, I'm sure part of the conversation would be, hey, I give you that kind of opportunity yeah. to do that, to do what you want to do, and you turn around and embarrass me and our program like that. And again, I, you know, I think... The Heisman pose is is something that's uh, sacred in college football, and and it's and he's a he's a jokester. I mean, Christian Williams is a he's jokester. He's a big he, personality. He, he loves he loves he plays the game the right way, and uh, and there's a lot of people out there that say you know what that's not a big deal, myself included, but not Davos Swain. Yep. I didn't have a problem with the celebration. But I think it's fun. I wouldn't throw the flag either. Here's Debo Samuel now. As Clemson has opened up a two touchdown lead. Here's Adnan Verk, who's a whole lot of fun. The end zone, LSU tying things up at seven, almost through one. Leaves. 
I got to be honest, that end, I was expecting a little more from you on the other way back there. We can hear, we can hear you that time. And I was looking forward to getting into some Woody repartee or something. But we're good. It's a long night. 7 17 to go. A little sleepy Here back there in the studio, evidently. It's been a long night, I'm sure. Another half day for Adnan. That's what hanging around Galloway will do to you, Adnan. Really, do you want to fire shots at Galloway <laughs> with halftime coming up? I got to feel he's getting the last laugh tonight, Bruce. All right. We'll see how South Carolina can answer. On the ground, he's been the workhorse. Mon Denson. So the story of the game to this point is Will Muschamp going for it. Down at one end on a fourth and goal from the three and not getting it. And Clemson goes 97 yards the other way. They have a fourth and goal. They go for it again. Well, I got to be honest. If I had Dexter Lawrence and, and Christian Wilkins, I would have gone for it too on fourth and one. Unfortunately for Will Muschamp, he doesn't have that option. It's a matter of personnel. Here's Jake Bentley now. Bentley throwing on the run and has it knocked away. Tanner Hughes got a hand on it. Third and five. Right off the bat, this is a big third down in this game. Very easily, this game could get out of hand if you don't convert here for South Carolina and you give the ball back to Clemson. So take your time here as Brian McClendon is doing. Get your best play called, and Jake Bentley needs to execute and convert. Third and five. Clemson has had three possessions and three touchdowns. Christian Wilkins, after the tongue lashing, is back in the game. Here's Bentley on the move. Going to take a shot late and complete. Able to hook up with Keel Pollard. And he will go the distance, 67 yards to the house. And that will silence the crowd on a third down play. Bentley able to find Pollard for the score. Oh, he just got lost. He's going to sprint out. He's going to sprint out this way. Watch all of the defense go this way, and it opens up the middle of the field for Pollard. Get to this point here. Look at Pollard. He's got his hands up wide open here. A nice job by Bentley of recognizing it, knowing he's going to be open down the middle, and then making the throw. That just got through Muse. And the extra point on the way, and it is good. And this when you start to wonder where this game was headed. South Carolina says this game is staying right here. The big play. Bentley to Keel Puck Clemson. They show up. They've banged out the building once again here tonight in Death Valley. With the 21-14 lead and the ball. Darian Kendrick trying to make some people miss. And he's out to the 30-yard line. Go back to that last touchdown. You know, it leaves. Jake Bentley's been playing his best football as of late of his career. And it's for plays like this. He's going to roll out. He wants to throw the ball to the outside. But both receivers are covered. There's nowhere to go with that football. But look at him readjust. Look at Christian Wilkins bearing down. Now, he knows Christian Wilkins is coming. It takes guts to come back and make that throw, to pull up on a rollout because you know you're not protected on the weak side. That is as, as good as you can do it if you're Jake Bentley, and it's a big reason why South Carolina is in this game. Keel Pollard scored a touchdown, his first career touchdown on opening night of the season against Coastal Carolina. And then he scores the touchdown here tonight in what was supposed to be the regular season finale for South Carolina. They'll play another game next week against Akron as a makeup game. That's ETN slammed into by R.J. Roderick. Second down and short. An opportunity to do something here for Clemson. Trevor Lawrence on the ground. ETN hits the spin cycle and he has first down yards and then we'll get thrown back. And here's Adnan. Uh, Steve, last time you said you couldn't hear me, so I was being very careful. The Woody Ripper tag, Notre Dame USC over on ABC. This is Bavai Malapai. USC scored first the last six games. They've lost four or five. Tell Gracie, by the way, Joey said tough one for Michigan. Back to you guys. All right. I'm not going to ask what Joey's record was against Michigan. Somebody might look that up. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Ben has it for you. <laughs> one, two, and one. Galloway against Michigan. Here's Lawrence on the run. He'll tuck it and go. Why not? Scoop right down the sideline. 
and gingerly run out of bounds at the 25. It's a gain of 32 yards for Trevor Lawrence. There's an injured player way back at the 30-yard line. I think it's Javon Kinlaw, and he's he's upset. He was in the backfield with an opportunity to get Trevor Lawrence on the ground, and it looked like his left leg buckled, and he's frustrated. He's pounding the ground. The junior from Charleston, South Carolina, understands the importance of this rivalry and wanted to come in and play well. He's their best defensive lineman. And take a look as he gets into the backfield. Yep, that right leg just kind of buckles. Adds injury to insult. Amazing how many Gamecock defensive players have gone down coming into this game and, and even here tonight. See if he's backed up by Josh Belk. Who was in Clemson's camp for transferring. Here's Adam Choice running away from people. Rashad Fenton able to drag him down before he hit Pater. Gain of 24. Choice. That's smart. Smart by Tony Elliott, Jeff Scott. Their best defense alignment goes out, running right up the gut. So many options for this Clemson offense. So many weapons. First down and goal for the two. On the ground, it's Choice again. Why not? He got you down there. In for the touchdown, Adam Choice. Clemson has had the football four times tonight, Greece. All four resulting in touchdowns. And Will Muschamp, he doesn't on the sideline. He's he's exasperated. It's not it's not a lack of effort. They just have so many injuries that they have no chance of stopping Clemson tonight on a consistent basis. Extra point is on the way. Clemson, look, I mean, this game might not be over, but the Tigers have just have not been able to find any answers. That was the takeaway from the Will Muschamp conversation. He hammered home the point. They don't see what we see every single week. Now, you know, that might be a one-year knock on the ACC. It is it is a down year there's in the no conference. Question. There's, there's no question. There's Clemson and there's everyone else, and we'll see what Pitt can do next week in the conference championship game. But, but they have been teams who were very good a year or two years ago, making it one of the better conferences. Just not this year. There's no question. And obviously Louisville has gone has cratered. And Florida State is struggling. And Miami has been uh, up and down. So it certainly has been a, a tough year for the ACC. But Clemson doesn't care. Right? They, they know where they want to go. They've handled their business. They've played their schedule. You can only play who's on your schedule. Right. They went and to now, College Station early. Right? And now they're, they're handing it to South Carolina, which is a good football team. 28-14 see the Carolina answer. Bentley throws down a man wide open. It's Samuel, and it's tail lights. Touchdown, Debo Samuel. It's 75-yard strike from Jake Bentley. And just when you want to count out the Gamecocks, they answer back. They clap back. Boy, and Kayvon Wallace just, just sat on Debo Samuel. It's just a post route. To the middle of the field, and this is not going to make Brent Venables happy. Two big plays by South Carolina's offense and back to back drives for touchdown. And we have touchdowns on consecutive plays. 67 yards for Clemson on the last play, and then a 75 yard scoring strike for South Carolina. Boy, as good as Clemson's offense has been in this game, this defense has gotten some cracks with big plays in the secondary. And that comes 12 seconds after Clemson's score. Give me more. First team, 3-0 against Ohio State. Research has confirmed. Leaves. Yes, he's too humble to, to admit that, but yes, that is true. We see 3-0 as starting quarterback, Michigan against Ohio State. Not too many people can make that claim. Let's go back and take a look at that last touchdown. Really great design by Brian McClendon, the offensive coordinator. These are two offensive tackles out here. That makes Clemson take two of their best pass rushers in Farrell and Bryant out of the formation, so they're not rushing. That's a win. Now you get matched up with Debo Samuel on a safety in Kayvon Wallace, and it's an easy throw for Jake Bentley. Really well designed by Brian McClendon. 
And then it's, it's so well designed, Dabos <laughs> says to Venable, hey, how come we didn't figure that out? We weren't on top of that. 28-21. The Gamecocks say, how's that four touchdown underdog thing looking right now? Here's Lynn J. Dixon getting into the act. His first carry. We'll see where he stepped out. They spread the wealth a week ago. He had carries from Ty Thomason and Ryan McLean late in the game with a blowout against Duke, 35 to 6. And we'll see how deep the running backs go for Clemson in this one. And I, if I'm Clemson, I'm going to continue to pound the football because this defensive front now, without Javon Kinlaw, is really susceptible in the middle. On the ground, Lynn J. Dixon. They'll move forward. We'll see where they spot it. This will be short of the first down. And South Carolina would love to have any kind of resemblance to this kind of running game that Clemson has working for them. Well, and Dabo Sweeney last week against Duke challenged this offensive line. They didn't run the ball well in the first half, but they came out in the second half. And Mitch Hyatt, Simpson, Falsinelli, they started to come off the football and pounded Duke into submission. On the ground, ETN has the first down. And Dabo told us this week that he really challenged the entire team at halftime a week ago, like he has not challenged them all season long. And that was the silver lining, right? The coaches love that. You win yeah. the game, but you still have a lot of things to clean up, and you can use that as a motivation for the next week's game. Yeah, no question. When everybody looks at the, at the schedule, they're going to look at a, a blowout win over Duke, 35-6. to six. But that game was in question at halftime. They were up 13-6. to six. Quick out to Kendrick. Across the 40, another first down. They can't bring him down. They push him out. Clock winds to under three minutes left to go here in the half. They'll move to six. We start the clock. Well, when you set out with your offensive game plan, if you're Clemson, uh, you want to be as efficient as they've been tonight. They've had certainly it going on all levels, running the ball inside, throwing the ball on the outside, both on the perimeter, but also downfield to T. Higgins and Ross. It's ETN. Just back to the line of scrimmage. South Carolina in desperate need of a stop. You see what Clemson has done. I mean, <laughs> there are touchdown drives and there are touchdown drives. No short fields here tonight. The Dabo really wanted to work on punting. He said that was an yes. area that they wanted to, to get better, and they, they're not going to get any practice on that tonight. Well, they fixed that last week. Here's Lawrence, the throw. Trying to get a little back shoulder. It was behind, too far behind T. Higgins. Will Spires punted seven times last week, and they gave him the special teams player of the week award. I mean, <laughs> that's clean living, right? What Dabo says, our biggest concern right now is the punting game. And bam, they're able to fix that right away. Well, Move on to the next thing. There's third and nine. I'm coming. Yeah, next thing is this big third and nine. If South Carolina can somehow, some way, get a stop here before halftime and be in a, a one score game with an opportunity to go down and get points before half, that'd be a huge win. Clemson will get the ball to start the second half. Here's Lawrence. Throws and Ross slipped down. And it will go as an incomplete pass and bring up a fourth down. You take it however you can get it if you're South Carolina and Ross as you mentioned just slipped it looked like the field on that side over there a little bit chopped up if he were able to keep his feet make that catch they had enough for the first down and they're gathering with the aforementioned Will Spires on the field see if we get our first Clemson punt of the night and there is Spires punted seven times a week ago even got Carson King an opportunity to punt. So Clemson punted eight times in all. And Will Muschamp is not buying it. He doesn't even have a returner back. He's looking for the fake. Spires will boot it in the air. See so if he can get a cushion landing. And it goes into the end zone. Well, on Sunday, December the 2nd, We'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff semifinal matchups in the Capital One Orange Bowl and the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. You can stream that show and every ESPN show with the ESPN app. Start your free trial of ESPN Plus today.
college football playoff semifinals. We played on the 29th of December. The championship game, the 7th of January. Levi Stadium home of the 49ers. Dabble did not like that that punt was not down. It was well executed. They had a bunch of players down there and allowed it to get into the end zone. Samuel again. For Clemson defensively, he's got to settle down here. The last two drives, big plays for touchdowns. Now a two-minute drill here. They've got to settle down. They've replaced Kayvon Wallace with Denzel Johnson at safety. Here's Bentley now. 90 seconds to go in the half. Able to complete the Brian Edwards with some running room. They'll cut it to the middle and out to the 45-yard line. A flag comes in. And another busted coverage for Clemson. Way too much space for Brian Edwards on the outside, and that flag came down at the line of scrimmage. Ineligible player downfield on the offense, number one. He was covered up and went downfield on the pass. That's a five-yard penalty. Replay, second half. So I thought Dabo's frustration on the sideline was the punt going into the end zone. It's a net of about 16 yards when you, you're hoping for a, a cushy landing and trying to pin him back deep, and that was not the case. And he's, he's looking at his defense saying, well, what are you doing? And you're looking at Isaiah Simmons, who was responsible for that flat. And there's been some breakdowns for Clemson in the secondary. They need to shore it up here on this drive, get to halftime to make the adjustments. Nullifies a 21-yard gain by South Carolina. The yards are piling up. Here's Bentley. Able to throw and complete to Casey Crosby, the tight end. His first catch of the night. So right now, Clemson has replaced two of their starters. I mentioned Kayvon Wallace, and now they've taken Isaiah Simmons out, and they have Jalen Williams in at that nickel. Bentley with all sorts of time. Intercepted! And it is picked off. J.D. Davis on the interception. And the first turnover of the night belongs to Clemson. I was standing right behind Jake. Bentley there in the end zone just watching his view of the play and he didn't see the linebacker. He went through his progressions, did not see the linebacker working underneath, just hands him one for an interception. Yeah, Todd, he was looking outside to the right and he tried to come back to his third receiver and just telegraphed it to Shai Smith and J.D. Davis. When you needed a play, Clemson needed to stop the bleeding on defense, makes a huge interception. The first career interception for the graduate student and the son of the great Clemson Tiger, Tiger Jeff. Amari Rogers a cut inside. Touchdown. Now there is a flag on the field. And we'll see if Rogers pushed off. The South Carolina sidelines already motioning. Let's bring that back. Pass interference. Offense number three. 15-yard penalty, replay, first down. They threw this ball, Trevor Lawrence did, on the back shoulder, and Amari Rogers, take a look at his left arm. Does he push off just a little bit? I mean, that's kind of a ticky-tack call. I would have kept the flag in my pocket there. And most of this crowd will agree. Better than 81,000 on hand tonight at Clemson's Memorial Stadium. With a minute left in the first half. Clemson has all three timeouts. At the South Carolina 48. Lawrence will throw. Finds Rodgers there, down to the 40. See if they spend a timeout there. Yep. And they will. That's one. From South Carolina. They donated $5 million to their football operations center just last year. Our condolences to the McNair and Texans family. As Trevor Lawrence throws and completes. Hunter Renfro. Haven't heard much from him in the second quarter. 
See if they use another timeout. Clemson will down to one left, 45 ticks. You see the arm strength from Trevor Lawrence. I mean, that play was off schedule. He moves around, buys a little bit of time, and then he's just got this rocket for an arm. The initial play is not there. Doesn't panic. Steps into the pocket, finds Renfro, and then fires a bullet. And a smart uh, timeout from Davo Sweeney. And Brian, it tells you the confidence that Davo Sweeney has in, in his freshman quarterback. To, you know, they could have put a knee on it. They could have gone into halftime, up a touchdown, but decided to just to stay aggressive with their young quarterback. Yeah, we'll see how aggressive they are here on the third down. And uh, if they get this first down, stop the clock, maybe spike it to preserve that, that timeout, and maybe take a couple of shots to the, to the end zone, and you can still throw it in the middle of the field because you have that timeout. 45 seconds left. It's a third and two. Whatever you decide to do, you better have talked about it on the sideline if you convert here what you're going to do immediately. South Carolina stopped him on the last third down opportunity. Not this time. There it is. Feaster. Now, now you clock it. He's going to get up. So they organize this during the timeout. Well done. For a freshman quarterback, you can't take anything for granted, right? You've got to practice all of those things. And uh, that was really well executed there by Trevor. You know, I talked to Todd when we opened the show tonight. You talked about, you know, you're a freshman to start the season. Are you still really a freshman at, at this point in the season? You've had a lot of game experience, a lot of big situations, learned a lot. Yeah, but you're still a freshman because you've never played in a rivalry game like this. And if they're fortunate, he's never played the championship game, which he'll do next week. Right. And then if they're fortunate enough to get to the playoff, that'll be a first experience. Lots of lessons to learn in the coming weeks for the Clemson Young. Quarterback who throws was looking for Justin Ross. The crowd screaming for a flag. At least to this point, won't get it. 34 seconds left. Third down. Love, love the play call. Love the aggressive down the field shot there. That was the first ball that, that Trevor Lawrence has thrown that was off the mark. You got you to keep that ball in bounds. If the ball's out of bounds, you never. I'm still waiting to see a, a completion out of bounds. Right. But you got to keep that in the field of play and let Ross go up and get it. Here's third and ten. Still that one timeout in his pocket. Lawrence crossed the middle of the field and it dropped. It was a little behind Justin Ross, but nobody on him, and he could not haul it in. Yeah, and that, that throw is a little short. And if that throw was out in front of Ross, yeah, he could have caught this, but an accurate throw here is an easy touchdown. He just kind of locked his front leg, and the ball came out low. That's a tough catch for a receiver running full speed down the field. But Kinlaw might have gotten a piece, a hand on that football. It leads to a field goal try. Here's Greg Hugel from 39 yards away. See if he can make it a 10-point game prior to halftime. All the way and no good. Missed it to the right. I think we've seen all the emotions out of Dabo Sweeney so far in this first half. We've seen the highs and we've seen the lows, and Todd's going to talk to him at halftime, so that'll be interesting. What a, what a what a huge bullet South Carolina dodges right there. They throw the interception. J.D. Davis gets the, the ball for him, and they've got an opportunity with all three timeouts in a short field, and they come up with zero points. And now Clemson will have to watch South Carolina for some of those emotions. Coach Sweeney. Gamecocks have two timeouts left in 25 seconds. They'll just take their chances going to the locker room trailing by seven. And a, what could have been a phantom call on Amari Rogers would have been a touchdown. So I'm sure that uh, Dabo Sweeney is going to have something to say to the officials about that. South Carolina has to be very pleased to only be down by a touchdown at halftime. Clemson will South Carolina. It's a one touchdown, one score lead for number two, Clemson. So a lot of good and some bad by the Tigers in that first half. Yeah, game. a lot of good, a lot of great on offense. They were running the ball with efficiency over 200 yards and then throwing the ball. Trevor Lawrence got hot in that first half, but the breakdowns on the defensive side, particularly in the secondary, two long touchdown passes for South Carolina in that first half. Jake Bentley already over 300 yards passing and three touchdowns in one half against one of the best defenses in college football. They are more than just hanging around as we get ready 
to open up the second half. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Todd McShay from the finishing touches on this Thanksgiving weekend. That will be a touchback, and they'll start out at the 25-yard line. So we saw number four, Michigan, go down early. You were 3-0 and against Ohio State. We're going to let that go now. It was that Rose Bowl MVP, and we're moving on to second half action. <laughs> Travis Etienne will open up the second half as the ball carrier. I tell you honestly, yes. the other reason why yes. I love this week is because for most of these players, for a lot of these players, not most, but for all of these seniors, it's the last time they're going to play in front of their fans. Right. And that's a huge deal, trust me, to each one of these kids and their families. And they have enjoyed this class, this Clemson class is a class like no other in the conference anyway. Amari Rogers will come up short of the first down marker. Clemson's trying to win a 50-second victory for this senior class. Only Alabama's class of 2017 won more games. They won 53. And you talk about the home stadium, Greece. Should they win tonight, they would be 27-1 and one here at Clemson's Memorial Stadium. Simply amazing. We're going to talk about a home field advantage. Third down, and a couple. Etienne will get it. He will squirt through the hole and stay on his feet. And that one loss right, was yeah. to Pitt, which they're going to have an opportunity to avenge next week in the ACC championship game. That will be a most interesting game. And they have not lost. They have not lost at home since that pit game a couple of seasons ago. I think you and McShay were here for that. I was elsewhere. Yes. I remember a great call on a final <laughs> field goal attempt. You're not going to hear it tonight. <laughs> on the ground, ETN. Oh, it's a face mask. You can see that. As ETN goes out to midfield. Eight plus yards on the play. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Number 42, 15-yard penalty, first down. And they'll tack on another 15 yards there. The game we were talking about. Oh, you're not against show Pitt, this, are you? Well, the Clemson folks are going to love you. Well, we were just talking about it that last loss. Okay. Uh, Chris Blewett was the kicker. And uh, let's just say he did not. <laughs> Pat Narduzzi coming up with an excellent game plan as Pitt won here by one point. Rosendo Lewis had the face mask penalty. That leads to Adam Choice, the ball carrier now for Clemson. So Rosendo Lewis in there, he's a backup linebacker, a true freshman, but there's so many injuries on this South Carolina defense, as we mentioned in the first half. They also lost Danny Fennell, the senior, uh, number 35, earlier in this game, who was subbing, filling in for Bryson Allen Williams. So now they've got a true freshman at every level of this defense trying to stop one of the best offenses in the country. Second down and four. Here's Choice. Just can't bring him down. Final to push him back after a gain of a couple. Sherrod Green made the stop. Well, Dabo clearly came out with a, a plan a lot like a week ago against Duke that we're going to run the football, we're going to get physical, and we're going to start wearing out this defensive front that has so many injuries on it. Well, and Todd, the other thing that you got to remember is they don't, they can't substitute. South Carolina can't substitute on defense because they basically they don't have enough players to substitute. So these are the guys you got to roll with the entire second half, and a great strategy to come out and be physical and run them over. Clemson just moved up and down the field of that first half. I think it's a third down. See the guy behind the background jumping up and down. Two seconds on the first play clock. First timeout, Clemson. And a couple minutes into the third quarter. Clemson will spend a timeout. Wonder if they'll need that down the stretch. And there he goes again. Dumping bean. I don't know what his name is, but from now on, he's third down guy. Does he get as excited on second down? Who knows? Here's third down and two. It's ETN. And now it's a first down. But there is a flag. And we will check the marker before we move those sticks. Holding. Offense. Number 75. Ten yard penalty. Replay. Third down. That's Mitch Hyatt, who has the school record.
for career starts at 54. Can't get any more experienced than Mitch Hyatt. He gets flagged there. Dabo disagreed. You know what that means, Chris? Another chance for your third down. Third down guy. Third down guy. I'm sure he has a name. Here's third down and 12. Tight man to man coverage. A single safety across the field. Rushing four. Lofts one. A beautiful throw and grab by Hunter Renfro. Third down when the chips are down. It's Renfro who rises up to make the grab. Identified the matchup on Roderick of safety. That ball is perfectly thrown. And a very similar play there that he got hurt on last week. His head came down, hit the, the field last week. Uh, this time he comes, makes the catch. Very well done. First down and 10 after the gain of 25. Here's ETN being dragged down from behind. Lost an article of clothing on the way. Steven Montak made the stop. When Renfro was down in a prone position being examined last week, Dabo said he was concerned for a second until he walked over and said, hey, when are you getting married? And Renfro knew exactly what the date was. And that's what Dabo said. He's going to be just fine. And apparently he is. Not everyone is fine on the field. There's an injured Carolina player. They cannot lose another defensive player. That's Israel Mukwamu, who is injured. He's a true freshman from Louisiana. And he's banged up now. While he's being attended to, we'll take a look at our PlayStation player index. And it is the aforementioned. He could contribute to this program. And he's going to walk out of this stadium yeah. tonight. His last time playing in this stadium. And he'll be remembered as one of the best to ever play in this stadium. Todd, what round are the Patriots going to draft him in? <laughs> Four. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And by the way, no one would be surprised if that's the case. Here's ETN dragging some bodies. Let's see where they spot him. On a, on a serious note, there is a market, there is a place in the NFL for guys who are super clutch like Hunter Renfro. Yeah, and to me, it's it's the route, it starts with the route running, his ability to separate, the quickness at the top of his, his stem and running routes. And then it's the toughness to do the dirty work over the middle. I mean, not a lot of guys want to want to take the hits that he takes, especially at that size. John Simpson is now being attended to. The junior. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Jared. Dare to be devoted. And Samsung. Matt Bockhorst has checked in to replace John Simpson, and he is leading the way. For the latest Clemson touchdown, Travis Etienne. And that is a Clemson single season record for ETN, his 18th rushing touchdown of the season. Well, you see Bockhorst there, he's fired up, number 65. He came in for John Simpson, and you see the, the trust they have in him. They run right behind him. He comes off the ball and puts his defense alignment in the end zone. That's what they teach you as an offensive lineman to score with your man. Out of the hold of Will Sweeney, Greg Hugel boots it through, and it's a two-touchdown lead for the second-ranked Tigers. You see Barkhorst, a redshirt freshman, number 65 at left guard. Here he is. He's just going to come off the football on Sandage, and watch he pushes him into the end zone, and ETN runs right behind him. That's a statement right there, coming off the football. And Clemson looks to return the favor. A win tonight would mark five in a row for the Tigers in this series. Here's Debo Samuel from the goal line trying to make something happen. Gonna bring it out to the 19-yard line. Here's Adnan Burke. All right, Steve, leave an update of the game over on ABC. They needed to do coming out of the locker room at halftime. Go right down the field offensively. Now we'll check on that defense. The adjustments that they made with Brent Venables in the secondary in particular against Jake Bentley. So here we go. First down and 10. Clemson takes the second half kickoff. They go 75 yards for the score. Here's Jake Bentley. Wide open. Able to hit Pollard again. Pollard who had the monster touchdown catch in the first half. 
able to make the grab and skate a 27 on the play. These Clemson defenders are, are looking to the sideline quite a bit, and both safeties, Tanner Muse and Denzel Johnson, that time were looking to the sideline, got caught off guard. Got four receivers to the right. Bentley in traffic through it anyway, and somehow able to get that ball through it's Debo Samuel. You see Pollard goes right down the middle. You see these guys looking over at the sideline. They snap the ball. They're not ready. And Tanner Muse doesn't even look at the middle of the field. He's a deep half safety. He's responsible for that throw. Hand off to Mon Denson. With that big game to Pollard, Jake Bentley breaks Tommy Suggs' rep. It's all on his shoulders. They can't run the football. Second down and nine. Look out for Christian Wilkins. It's too late. Second sack of the night for that Clemson defense. This is what Brett Venables needs to do. You have the best defensive line in the country. You don't need to manufacture any pressure. Play coverage and allow these guys to rush. Nobody on this offensive line for South Carolina can block Christian Wilkins' consistent basis. Third and 18 and a jump. It's like water. Off start. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, third down. Third time this game, second on Wadham time. Uh, Christian Wilkins, there's a reason why he's considered a first-round draft prospect. The, the quickness and power that he has in the upper body, you're going to try to one-on-one -on -one him, there's a really good chance he's going to disrupt the play. Uh, Todd, I would, I would say that the thing that really separates him is his athleticism. He's, he's like a, a receiver athletically out there playing the defensive line position. How do you like third and 23 against this Clemson defense? Bentley with good protection, steps into one and fires and missed his target, Kyle Markway. Tanner Muse had the coverage. Fourth down. And you see the adjustment from Brent Venables. We talk about, you know, coaching in college and the adjustments at the halftime are so important. They gave up so many yards in the passing game in the first half. They come out with a very different strategy. Rely on your best players up front to get pressure and protect your secondary, and they get this stop defensively. Here's Charlton on for just his second punt, standing at his own 31. Get it away. Mari Rogers is back for it. Clemson. And he'll just let it bounce. It'll bounce out of the end zone for a Tuck Clemson comma, South Carolina. It's first an Ipte for Trevor <laughs> Lawrence. And he's able to complete Justin Ross. And they'll move the chains again. Ipte, the funding arm that started in 1934 here. I pay $10 a year. Do you think the top boosters are still paying 10 bucks and getting great seats? Or? That's what, you know, that's the, the, the seat backs that yeah. you got in the stadium. Yeah. That's what that costs. Right? Yeah. Inflation has taken over, I'm sure. <laughs> Hip to. It's everywhere. Just like all in for Davin. Tavian Feaster crosses midfield. Right, Clemson is doing whatever they want, whenever they want offensively. They can run it. They can throw it, play action. We've got the burners on the outside with Ross and Higgins, and, and the running game has been consistent, even with the, the loss of John Simpson on that last drive. On first down and 10, across midfield is Trevor Lawrence. Has good protection. And let's see if that's a catch, or is he out of bounds? Justin Ross. Out of bounds. Second down. What other team around the country agree? So a lot of teams have great wide receivers, but does anybody else in Alabama, do they have anyone with a Travis Etienne as well? That kind of standout running back to go along with the outside weapons that really separates Clemson's offense. Uh, Alabama. Right. Uh, Alabama does, certainly. Oklahoma? Uh, Oklahoma doesn't have that kind of bell cow running back. They've got a bunch of, of good backs, but not somebody with the talent of, a, of an ETN. Lawrence throwing off the play fake to T. Higgins. Finding some running room. He's inside the 20. And staying on his feet down inside the 15-yard line. Here come the Tigers again. This offense for Clemson is predicated off this run game and then the play action. And we've seen four or five times tonight leaves this skinny post. I think it's the favorite route that Trevor Lawrence throws. And certainly Higgins and Ross love running that route because 
You throw the ball on time. They're big physical wide receivers and they can run after the catch. Gain of 34 there. Here's Lawrence. They mix it up so well. Tavian Feaster to the house. Touchdown. And the Tigers will tack on another score. Touchdown. Your hand can touch the ground. As long as not a knee or an elbow. The forearm, an extension of the elbow. It's connected to the arm bone. Leave <laughs> it there. The bugle, the extra point. Able to boot it through. Clemson has six touchdowns. Here today, they've opened up a 21-point lead with 6.45 to go here in the third quarter. Is it good for the sport? I mean, they seem to be the two best teams in the country. You want to see the best play for the championship. I don't know. I don't know how you could be tired of that, that matchup, right? It's an awesome, awesome matchup. Uh, as for number three, here's Edna. Yeah, no push-ups here, Steve Levy, but we can update you on Notre Dame and USC. Trojans up 10-7. And trying to add some more points, but instead Notre Dame's defense steps up big time. Getting the fumble, and so it remains 10-7, almost that. By the way, Fashion Police, loving the jacket tonight, Leaves. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you for noticing that, man. That's, his, that's his Bear Bryant <laughs> imitation, that, man. I wore it at Tuscaloosa <laughs> this year, too. <laughs> Everything else is navy blue. Getting bored with my wardrobe myself. <laughs> I think weak, man. <laughs> Worse. Got it. Check. Brian Edwards, another reception, his third of the game. Todd, a thought on, on one versus two, you good with that? Yeah, listen, it, it, does it get old to a certain degree? Yeah, maybe, but I also think every time we've had that matchup, it's, it's been a really good game. Shai Smith on the receiving end. And I guess for the other college programs around the country, if you don't like it, do something about it. Right? Try to out-recruit these two schools. Todd, how do you think the uh, the Clemson uh, skill players match up with what Alabama has? It's a good question. I think Damian Harris is probably a little bit better than Travis Etienne, but not by much. Yeah. And I think I think Clemson's deeper at wide receiver, but Alabama's very deep too, and, and their top guys are exceptional. So I, I think it's I think it's really close. Two first-year starting quarterbacks are playing a lot of confidence. Here's Bentley, and he airmails. One over Brian Edwards head. Dexter Lawrence came in and put a shot on Jake. How about the defense is Todd then? Well, Clemson has has the front. They, they, they make some mistakes in the secondary. That's going to have to get fixed. But I think defensively, they're every bit as good as, as Alabama, in my opinion. Yeah, I, you know, after watching tonight, Todd, i got to be honest. Yeah, I, I have concerns about the secondary for Clemson. They, they have had some communication issues. They've had some matchup issues. And Alabama's defense has got, gotten better as the season's yes. progressed. Yes. We've seen some slow starts out of Clemson as well. Last two weeks, for example. Check the marker. See if Crosby moves. False start. Offense. Number three. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's Casey Crosby and the fourth such infraction on the Gamecocks tonight. But it's kind of interesting because I think Clemson offensively has gotten better as the season has gone on. But defensively, they've had some lapses. And uh, so they're going to have to continue to shore that up in the secondary as the season goes on. Second and 15. Five on the play clock, flashing a lot of signals. What does all that mean? It means a run to Mon Denson for a few. J.D. Davis made the stop. Davis earlier had the interception, the lone turnover of the game. Get his dad is Jeff, He's the All-American linebacker here at Clemson, national champion. In 1981, sailed across the middle. Jacob August, welcome to the ball game. His first grab. And Jake Bentley is continuing to play and stand in there and take some shots. He gets hit here by Joseph, the linebacker, but delivers a strike to August, who comes up gimpy. 
but that's that's how you have to hit as a safety these days. 17 yards on that completion. Back to Denson. Breaking some tackles. Then he was tripped up and couldn't get his balance back. And they're going to mark him just short of the first down. South Carolina and Brian McLennan have made the decision to go as fast as possible now. Not worried about the, the defense. They're just trying to get something going, some momentum offensively. Something came out flying, maybe a mouth guard off of Denson. As he's gotten the majority of the carries, J.D. Davis able to bring him down. Yeah, something there. That was a violent collision there, and it's starting to get chippy. Denson and uh, freshman Xavier Thomas were getting after it on the last play. So Denson has 11 carries for 39 yards, and, and he's their leading rusher by far. Rico Dowdle has checked in now. And here is Dowdle. Did not play last week. Kendall Joseph made the stop. Take a look. That may have come off of Joseph's face mask rather than Denson. I'm not sure. That's paint? We trade in paint? <laughs> may have been a visor. Out to Samuel. Oh, what a play. What a tackle. We'll see where they mark him. Like right at that. Imaginary, not so imaginary yellow line. But Isaiah Simmons in space, able to hang on. And it is a first, it is a first down. Great effort from Debo Samuel. Despite the score of this game, South Carolina has an uphill battle, but there's no question about the effort from South Carolina offensively. Here's Bentley. Cox and throws. Too tall, too high for Kyle Markway. And Markway's a guy who goes 6'4", 242. Couldn't haul it down. I can't tell you how tough it is for a quarterback to play against a good defense, a good defensive line uh, without a running game. And Jake Bentley is really, uh, this is all on his shoulders. He doesn't have a whole lot of support. Now that they're down three touchdowns, they got to throw on most downs. That's the most difficult spot to be in as a quarterback, and Jake Bentley has been up to the challenge. Second down and 10, Clemson 20. On the ground for Denson, able to turn the corner and stick a foot in the turf. And they get banged out of bounds down at the four by Tanner Mews and company. First and goal. A little semblance of the running game. You're starting to get Denson. He had a physical run on Joseph. Now you're starting to soften up that Clemson defense and nice run on first down. First and goal, it is Denson. He lowers the shoulder for a yard or two. J.D. Davis made the stop. Denson really was forced into play, and he probably shouldn't have played that old Miss game, but they just had nobody else to hand the football off to. And all Denson did was have 12 carries for 102 yards and ripped off a 69-yarder at Ole Miss. At the game of his young career, but he's not going anywhere that time. And to bring up a third down and goal, Dexter Lawrence saw to that. Yeah, this is where they have really struggled, right? Uh, inside the five-yard line. They went for it in the first half on fourth down, weren't able to get the ball in the end zone. And without that the physical inside run game, it's very difficult to score in this area of the field. This is the 14th play of the drive. Dowdle is in. Denson's out. And nobody's covering Brian Edwards up here. Late personnel changes by Clemson snap. on third and goal. Missed opportunity to snap that football. Dabble's sure running down there to call Clemson. a timeout, but as a quarterback, you got to see that snap it and throw it quick. Third down and goal for South Carolina. Spencer Easton Riddle has checked in. Number 45 in a fullback position. They're going to have to throw the football to get it in, Leaves. It's a pitch to Denson, and he won't get there. Austin Bryant saw to that. Cleveland Furrell was there also. Fourth down and goal. Well, you made the decision in the first half to go for it on fourth down, and now you're down three touchdowns in the second half, approaching the end of the third quarter. So and I think Will Muschamp is going to go for it. But I, I just think you should have tried to throw the ball on first or second down to get him off guard. Now everybody knows you got to throw. It's going to be difficult. 
with two minutes left in the third quarter in a 21 point game. And Will Muschamp wants to talk it over. He'll spend time out here. You mentioned the gamble from the first half. They gave him a, a pitch the second time. And he's able to use his momentum to get into the end zone for the score. You know, a lot of teams like to roll out in this situation and get the quarterback on the edge. I'm not as big a fan. The only reason is it constricts where you can throw the ball as a quarterback, and the defense knows that. If you roll to the right, then all the defense has to cover right. is that half of the You're field. Not throwing right? back You're across not throwing your body. Back. Right. Unless they sneak someone out, but in man coverage, you have somebody for that. So. You got Brian Edwards at the top of the screen, matched up on Terrell. Question is, will they will they have Muse here help after the snap? And a flag. Ferrell might have done a somersault in the middle of everything, trying to get set Delay there. a game on the defense. Disconcerting signals. Half the distance, fourth down. Okay, Doctor, I haven't heard that call. <laughs> haven't heard that call in quite some time. Disconcerting signal. Yes. I, I, actually, I don't think I've ever heard that call. Right. Oh, Ro oh, 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 Rogers. Oh, oh, he, did, he did a little barrel roll. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I, did, I don't know why that, that, that could not have been the penalty. Sometimes they will call if there's a, a false snap count. If a defender right. is you're screaming out, you're blocking out a count, too. Disconcerting signals. And they hear something you don't see every day, department. Here's fourth and goal now. From the two. Bentley to throw for it. Back of the end zone. Knocked away. Denzel Johnson able to knock it away. And the Tigers' defense holds again on fourth and goal. Uh, trying to get the ball to your best player, Devo Samuel. And it's just, just good defense there. They dropped eight. Denzel Johnson in perfect position. And when, when the official sees that that's a hope throw, you're just hoping something good happens, they're not likely to pull that flag out. So for South Carolina, the frustration now of a 15 play, 15 play, 73 yard yeah. drive with zero to show for it. I mean, when they look at this film tomorrow, they're gonna, they're gonna look inside the five. Their inability to run the football between the tackles has cost them 14 points in two separate situations. So Clemson up 21. They'll take over from their two-yard line and put it on the ground with ETN. He'll get out to about the five. Ernest Jones, the stop, and the ball came loose after the whistle had blown. Again, in this game, we have seen Clemson with 95 and 97-yard touchdown drives. I honestly don't think they care where they get the ball. It's just a matter of how long the touchdown drive is going to be. That's how good Dabo Sweeney's got it going right now on offense. Second down and six. ETN from the end zone. Quick throw by Lawrence. Out to Kendrick, making people miss. And there is your breathing room. Darian Kendrick, a true freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina. You gotta wonder how much gas is left in the tank for South Carolina defensively. So we've documented the injuries that they've had to sustain, and these, these guys are getting up there in snaps. Clemson's about to snap it for the 68th time. Final minute of quarter number three. ETN taking a pounding, and here's Adnan. All right, Leafs, thank you very much. Over on the SEC Network, we go to Kyle Field, where Joe Burrow completes to Justin Jefferson. Good game right now. It's tight. 17-all right now. Number 17 in the country being pushed by the Aggies. Steve, back to you. So Texas A&M, Adnan, in their game against Clemson, the Tigers won, but they allowed 26 points to A&M. That's the most points anyone has scored against this Clemson team. And here's South Carolina stuck on 21 so far tonight as we get ready for the fourth. Maybe the final play of the third. Little one-touch pass to Kendrick. And making people miss. Darian Kendrick. Amazing how Clemson continues to churn out these skill guys on the outside, young and old. And 
that will do it. It's a gain of 19. End of 2018 season. I don't know how many more games there will be in Clemson season. They'll play in the conference championship. And the, the playoffs most likely will await these Tigers. That be one or two games. Lynn J. Dixon, the ball carrier. True freshman from Butler, Georgia. We open up quarter number four. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay. Hope you're having, continue to have an excellent Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Here's Lawrence. He'll tuck it and run. That was one of the things Dabo said last week about Lawrence when he was misfiring. At least he was making some plays with his legs and yeah. a, had a big run in the first half here tonight. Yeah, you know, I, I go back to that, that one run against the first game he started against Syracuse and he got hit on the sideline and had to come out of that game. And, and Dabo's been cautious with him running, but he so listen, that's a big part of his game that, that people overlook. He can run, he can move. They're going to need him to do that as this. The playoff chase continues down the stretch, but be smart when you're when you're caught. Make sure you get down. Three rushes for 48 yards for Lawrence, rushing tonight. On third down and three, give it to the professional running back. Travis Etienne is just tripped up, or he would have had another touchdown. And you call him a professional. He's still an amateur, but he's he's on his way. Just the shoelace. And then his job title is running back. <laughs> as opposed to Trevor Lawrence. He handled last week like a professional. He kind of, you know, he got talking to uh, in the first half, didn't yeah. play well, and, and handled his business, came back ready to play this week. ETN's over 100 yards rushing tonight, 21 carries, buck 21 on the ground. And it's Dixon this time, the ball carrier. <laughs> Set off some fireworks. So I, you know, I wonder if there's, you know, some kind of special effects. Yeah, fog is rolled in. Going here. into the fourth quarter, that has uh, natural Mother Nature effects. The fog rolling in. As Keir Thomas is being attended to. Uh, already there in the early stages, the fog has rolled in here at Clemson. That's Kendrick running all the way across the field for first down yardage. Probably ran 30 and got 10 yards on the play. Well, Gary and Kendrick is coming on for Clemson offensively. Yeah, we know they've got the, the pillars outside and T. Higgins, Ross, Amari Rogers, but with Hunter Renfro playing that slot position, they need some speed, and Kendrick in that position brings an element that Hunter Renfro just doesn't have from a speed standpoint. 33 Tiger first downs tonight already. <laughs> Just inside the start of the fourth quarter. On the ground, Adam Choice. Well, Matt Bockhorst has come in for John Simpson, and, and Clemson fans watching this game will probably want to know if John Simpson is, is up. He's on the sideline. Looked like he was ready to come back into the game, but because of the score, I think Davo Sweeney just kept him on the sideline. That's good news for Clemson's offensive line going forward. Second down of four. So Garrett Williams shift there. He's the lead blocker behind Adam Choice. He's got the first down and thinking about more. Into the end zone for the touchdown. Another score for Clemson. Greece, I'm hesitant to point out that this drive started from their own two because I know it doesn't matter to you where they start, but that's a 98-yard touchdown drive. Just an opportunity to get more yardage uh, piling up, and no matter where they get the ball in this game, and a lot of this has to do with Clemson and how explosive they are. But right now, it's it's kind of a combination. There's no gas left in the tank for South Carolina. Their, their injuries have taken their toll, and there's no confidence there. And so there's no chance for them to stop this offense. And that is a Clemson school record 41 rushing touchdowns this season for the second ranked Tigers. The extra point is good, too. 
Steve Spurrier would take over. And, and the NBA's malice at the Palace happened just one day prior to the South Carolina Clemson brawl. Do what we can. Doing the best we can, and Dan, thank you. So what do you mean we're not going to fit into our three-hour and 15-minute window here? <laughs> it's like, uh, who's got a Snickers bar? Going to be here for a while. <laughs> How are they not sponsoring our college football game to this point? 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Let's see what South Carolina has left in the tank. As we look at the veteran and the freshman. All right. South Carolina in the game through halftime and it's kind of gotten away from him here in the, in the second half where he's had to throw it pretty much on every down. Now they're running the football knowing that listen we just need to take some time off the clock. What impressed me most tonight with Bentley was his patience and then his toughness in the pocket. I mean, he took hit after hit and really just never phased him. Here's Bentley to throw. Steps up and completes to Debo Samuel. Nolan Turner got a fistful of jersey. I mean, the word on Bentley from those who have seen every game said the kids played one bad game all season long. Kentucky. That, that game against Kentucky. Uh, other than that, he's been very good and getting better as the season has progressed. And again, they'll play a makeup game at home against Akron next week. Well, offensively, they, they have been getting better and better. And Brian McClendon is in his first year of calling plays for Will Muschamp. Uh, and they have gotten better as the season has gone on. And Jake Bentley has gotten better. And he's just a junior. I have an opportunity to come back with some pieces on offense. You know, two, a year ago, they only averaged 22 points a game offensively. And, and this year, they've come in and added 10 points to that total, averaging 32 a game. So they have gotten much better. That hasn't been the issue. The issue has been defense. Right. But if you want anybody to fix your defense, Will Muschamp has got to be at the top of the list. Uh, the line from Muschamp was a couple of years ago, it was like, Bringing a slingshot to a gunfight here. They lost 56 to 7. Totally embarrassed. They said they had players playing who shouldn't have been playing. True freshmen who are now, by the way, juniors who gained valuable experience. And again, they're going deep in their defense again with all the injuries tonight. So people will uh, hopefully pick up some experience that will benefit them down the road. But not tonight. The flag flies in late. Johnson and Turner, the coverage on Samuel. Pass interference on the defense, number 24, 15-yard penalty, first down. It's Nolan Turner. Boy, that's a bad call. Yeah, and it's even through the fog, I don't see that. Yeah, Debo Samuel is another one of these great college football players whose career is coming to an end. And uh, it's been a lot of fun watching him play through the SEC. One of the more respected players in that uh, conference, such a, a multifaceted and talented player. Not a true wide receiver in the sense of the word, but just a great football player and a great career he's had in South Carolina. Here's Bentley to throw. Up high. And it's Brian Edwards. Another reception for Edwards tonight. That's his fifth. Brian Edwards will have a decision to make after this season. Be interested in what Todd thinks, but I think he's a he's going to be a bona fide NFL wide receiver and just a junior. He's got a choice whether he comes out or not. He said he will submit the paperwork and we'll see what the NFL types will tell him what kind of grade he might have. Here's Bentley and airmails Edwards. Todd, you want to explain that again? So a grade of one means you'd be a, a first round pick, and then a grade of two means a lower round, and then and then three means what? Go back to college? Yeah, that, there's only three options they give you. First round, second round, or go back to school. And they changed that recently. They used to give guys, you know, third, fourth, fifth round projections, but they're trying to, and as they should be, trying yeah. to get kids to go stay in school if they're not going to be drafted. Yeah, I like that. That's a great smart. point. On the run, throwing it across the middle. And Dowdle couldn't pull it back. It was behind him. Bentley throwing on the run, found a little seam. Well, Bentley's in the foxhole now. He's just trying to find enough space and buy enough time to get rid of the ball. He's doing everything he possibly can to immense pressure. And Dowdle's got to make that play for the quarterback. Bentley already fourth all time. 
South Carolina passing yards. And will add to his total here tonight and next week. And the Gamecocks obviously bowl eligible already. Here's Bentley throwing for the score to Debo Samuel. Touchdown. Puts Bentley over 400 yards passing on the night and his fourth touchdown pass. Before, every, before everybody gets in a huff about another breakdown by Clemson defensively, these are, the, these are the backups that are in there now. And that was just a miscommunication in the second level. And Debo Samuel was running wide open. Extra point on the way. For Parker White. And whether South Carolina wins this game or not, the 28 points scored by the Gamecocks, that's the most points scored of all Clemson's opponents against the Tigers' defense this season. And Dean, we send it back to Adnan Burke. All right, Steve, already one major shakeup uh, today, obviously yeah, with Michigan losing to Ohio State, but how about Notre Dame USC? They're in trouble, but Dexter Williams to the rescue. 12th rushing touchdown this season. Maybe this will jumpstart the Irish offense. 14-10 on ABC. Steve? And then thank you. Keep us posted. You know, what's, what's amazing to me, that, that kind of motto that came out of that first press conference. All right, in, yeah. 10 years ago, all in. That, that he was able, as a 37, 38-year-old, I think, at that time, wide receiver coach right. that, that had an interim opportunity that he was able to strike that tone and that tone of this all in and that culture has lived now for 10 years here at Clemson and it's been the right tone and it's stuck and it's pretty amazing when you think about it he had never called plays never been a coordinator obviously never been a head coach but there's something about Dabo Sweeney his coaching staff so people have bought in and they've stayed with him in the system and and Dabo's got a lot of great sayings, right? So uh, be empowered through the game, not defined by it. And uh, live the legacy. Don't worry about leaving a legacy and those kinds of things. And look, it, it's easy when you're winning and everything's going great to buy in. We understand that. And I would imagine there are a lot of people jealous of what Dabo Sweeney's got working here in Clemson. And there's our, our man, third down guy. I bet he already has a Twitter handle, at third down guy. <laughs> Here's third and eight. And just a little short, bring up a fourth down. Todd, hey, Levy, he's got a name, you know. <laughs> okay, why don't you tell me his name? Hampton McIver. It's my best work all night. <laughs> Did you just make that up or not? <laughs> Mac Check it. Or MacGyver or McIver? McIver. Oh, my goodness. First name Hampton. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know there are more than 2,400 Hampton Inns around the country? Oh, and you there's again. One, and and there's one near you. Is that another promo you're reading? Bonus promo. Well, tell MacGyver I'm, I'm not impressed with his effort here in the second half. He's kind of given up. He's putting the third down signs away. He's kind of dejected. Poor stamina. Yeah. Need more energy. That kid is going to sell hats and T-shirts. Third down guy. I, I promise. Before Clemson punts for the second time tonight. 49-28 Tigers. Ten guys on the field, and Simmons was the 11th guy. Isaiah Simmons had a rough night. He's been uh, in, he's going to be in the doghouse with Dabo Sweeney this week. And it's it's a credit to Dabo. He's still coaching hard, even though they're up uh, 21 points, as Sen you Sends the right message. Yeah. On fourth and one, Will Spires. Knuckling, low line drive kick. Where it stops, nobody knows. Dabo, see, that's exactly what Dabo wanted him to do. See it? The crowd was moaning, and he says, you know what, that, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Didn't want to return. Earlier, he was upset with Christian Wilkins. Because Wilkins posed the, the Heisman pose in the end zone, came off the field. He took him off the field and gave him a tongue lashing. And I'll tell you what, I, I, this, I, this gets your respect, that the best player on your team will be treated just like everybody else in his last game in this stadium. Right. Dabo leaned in with a shoulder. Dabo scrappy. Oh, yeah. Don't sleep on Dabo. Passes nearly intercepted and will fall harmlessly down. But Brian are, Edwards, the intended target. There are a lot of coaches in college football that would not do that. Uh, that would let that slide. 
And uh, you know he's constantly coaching, and I think he knows that you know to compete with the best, the Alabamas of the world, uh, he's tasted that now for a couple of years in a row, and he's going to have an opportunity potentially to do it again. And he knows the standard and the process that it takes to get this team ready mentally, physically, and he will, he will continue to, to coach at that level. We learned something else about Dabo. Again, he had his birthday this past week. So what would you get for your, what do you get the man who has everything? He said he got some real cool stuff. He said slippers. <laughs> Among the list of cool gifts to get, I don't think I would say slippers. Bentley is tripped up and taken down. Adnan, back to you. All right, Leaves, thank you very much. Utah State at Boise State just about to kick off action over on ESPN 2. It'll be here on ESPN once your game concludes. But number 21 versus number 23 from Boise. The fourth game of our quadruple header here on ESPN coming up. But first, back to you, Leaves. All right, Adnan, thank you. And that game will decide who hosts the Mountain West Conference championship game next Saturday night on ESPN. Fourth and 14. See another punt from Joseph Charlton, who's had one touchback on the season. There's 34 punts coming in. And that's a fair catch from Amari Rogers. Take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Capital One. Every increase for a lot of reasons. They've been the talk of college football in a season that has lacked in drama to this point. UCF has had a lot of the conversation, a lot of the interest, I think, as ETN carries the football. And now poor Mackenzie Milton, so much fun to watch, to cover. And he had the surgery already. And, you know, hopefully he's on his way to recovery. Everybody that loves college football, you know, loves Mackenzie Milton. He stands for the, all the good things that, that exist in being a student athlete in college football. So our best out to you, Mackenzie, and, and to heal up uh, quick. Uh, but certainly it'll be interesting. They, they got a big game next week. Uh, Memphis in the yeah. championship game. They beat Memphis earlier in the year only by three points with Mackenzie Mill. DeAndre Overton hits the score sheet and gets his first catch of the night. Sunday, December 2nd, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff semifinal matchups the Capital One Orange Bowl, the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. And then tonight, after Utah State, Boise State. It's Sports Center. Michael Eaves, Kevin Connors, the break it down. Heather Dinich will join the party. Talk about the big day in college football and, and what those losses by a couple of top 10 teams will mean uh, over the course of this weekend. And again, we'll see how that checks out. I, I think the committee's in an interesting position with UCF now. How do you treat a team based solely on an injury to their star player? Well, I think they have an opportunity to watch what they do against Memphis next week, right? And, and they've got a, a comparison, obviously, with, with the way that, that they played earlier in the year with McKenzie Murphy. Lynn J. Dixon for another first down for Clemson. 15-yard pickup. Will Sweeney on the field. He is a wide receiver on the season. He has six catches. Had a touchdown earlier this season. Did a nice job on a hold early on. On an extra point. Fumble. Ball comes out. And it is recovered by South Carolina. And that is the first turnover for Clemson tonight. Brad Johnson able to fall on the football, Chris. Yeah, Dabo Sweeney had his quarterback in there, Trevor Lawrence, and thinking that everything was going to be fine with the handoffs. And Dixon looked like just not securing that football. Got the starters in there on the offensive line, and you got the backups at wide receiver and the starting quarterback and a backup running back. Just kind of, a, they probably haven't repped that a whole lot. Sometimes, if you have a backup running back in, it's better to have the backup quarterback in because those two guys get more reps together. Just not on the same page. And you never know who you're going to need down the stretch based on injury. We'll talk about the McKenzie Milton situation. But everybody is one play away. That's how how fragile these careers can be, these seasons can be. You need to appreciate it well, while you have them in there. It's kind of interesting that Clemson coming in to the season felt really good about the two quarterbacks they had, obviously Kelly Bryant and Trevor Lawrence. But I think they found a diamond in the rough in Chase Bryce, who came in and won that Syracuse game for them. Uh, outstanding quarterback. Here's Rico Dowdle. 
The ball carrier trying to turn the corner. Uh, Kelly Bryant's going to make a decision on December the 4th. He's already visited Arkansas, Mizzou, North Carolina, Mississippi State. Canceled his visit to Miami, which is interesting to a lot of people. And maybe a second visit to Auburn upcoming. That'll be interesting. This was a, uh, a hockey line change here that all gone wrong. Too many Legal substitutions on, on the defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. They had guys in the backfield. They had guys trying to get on and get out. They're trying to put their starters back in. It's a 21-point game, and they, they get half in and half out. But that's what you wanted Bentley to do earlier, right? You wanted him to snap it yep. earlier for an easy score or at least if nothing else, you pick up the penalty flag on Clemson. But I think this is telling you something that Dabo Sweeney now, after that turnover, he says to heck with that. It's I'm Christian put, Wilkins. I'm putting my starters back in on defense. Wilkins and Lawrence are in there. Furl is in there. On the ground, Dowdle. Breaking through right up the middle, looking for a running room. And Rico Dowdle is down to the 20-yard line, and that is against the starting defense for well, I'll tell you what, when you take the starters out, it's hard to put them back in. And you might say, well, why? Well, because mentally, they're on the sideline thinking, okay, I'm done for the night. Let me put them back in. And South Carolina's not done for the night. Shy Smith skies to bring it in from Jake Bentley for the touchdown. Wow. And I can tell you, Isaiah Simmons is not going to want to go over to the sideline. It's been a tough night for him, and he's given up plays downfield. He's missed his assignments on special teams, and now he gives up a touchdown, and all of a sudden, wait a minute. Get an onside kick, and we'll see what happens. Here we go. Five touchdown night for Jake Bentley. You ever drive a Bentley? You probably, you probably owned a Bentley. How silly of me. <laughs> I drove one once. I am not a car guy. I'm a point A to point B guy. Got it. A Metro card. Give him credit, though. Bentley has not given up on this game. Now he, he's impressed me in every way tonight. Extra point. And Parker White is good. And hold your hats. Two-score game, 3.37 to go in the fourth. When Jake Bentley has been outstanding. He identified the matchup here, Isaiah Simmons. That's a mismatch with Shai. That, Allstate. Here's your onside kick. Takes a high hop, and it is recovered easily by DeAndre Overton for Clemson. 12 touchdowns in the game, Adnan topped that. <laughs> I'll do my best here, Leaves. Big game here between LSU and Texas A&M. So A&M up 24-17 on the move. It's Kellen Mond to Travion Williams. But then Michael Divinity, the scoop and score. LSU's turnover margin is plus 12. That leads the SEC. Awfully timely right here. It's 24-all right now, SEC Network. I topped you, Leaves. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I've gotten used to that. 3.36 to go here in the fourth on what has become a foggy, cold night. Clemson, comma, South Carolina. Travis Etienne is still in there, and he's running the football. He's, he's back in there after that uh, fumble by Nixon. Yeah. I think it's going to be all the starters all the way through, and you know Dabo Sweeney will use that as motivation this week. Dabo wants to talk it over with some people. South Carolina calls a timeout. Kick off your Sunday with NFL Countdown. Tomorrow, see how a special message of hope from Panthers quarterback Cam Newton inspired a family when they needed it the most. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, here on ESPN. And Monday night, former Clemson star Deshaun Watson leads the Texans against Marcus Mariota and the Titans. Coverage kicks off with Monday night countdown at 6. Big deal. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah. <laughs> They've got DJ Reader on there with no clown. Those were just the, the, the Clemson players, Chris. Okay. But the truck and the people there really appreciate you pointing that out <laughs> to most of America. Team I mean, player. Ha happy Thanksgiving, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> to the crew that traveled on Thursday. I thought it was coming up. It was a change. They were going to oh. go to the next graphic, oh. and then there was all hot the... Hot change. Yeah, Got it. Was it. Hot push. While you were enjoying your hot turkey and gravy and stuffing, the crew is here on a Thursday <laughs> eating out of a truck. But tell them the truth. Our crew... Listen, America. Our crew's the best. <laughs> Do a great job, and again, many of many of our folks uh, traveling 
during Thanksgiving, away from their families on the holidays, and, and we appreciate their efforts. T. Higgins hauls it in, and they're still running with the ones. Yeah, and, and still throwing the ball. I mean, they, they want to put some more points on the board, and I don't blame them. They only have one chance a, yeah. a year to play your rival, and it's only 60 minutes, and uh, you want to use every minute on that clock. I thought Urban was trying to score 70 against Michigan today. That was pretty close. They were running up the score there a little bit on you. you keep bringing that up, right? Well, it's a new audience continues to join us <laughs> every 15 minutes or so. Everybody's jumping over to this game, right? <laughs> it's a two-score game. We've been through this before. It's nearly a three-score game. T. Higgins couldn't make the over-the-shoulder grab. I have no idea why. The Steve Montag? You no, know, the corner, Mukwamu, is waving his finger over there. He's a true freshman, and, and they're excited about his future, but you know, you're losing the game, kid. You know, a little bit of poise and Will Muschamp shaking his head, saying, listen, just do your job, cover. We don't need any trash talk. 2.43 to go here in the fourth. Trevor Lawrence still in there and handing it off to Travis Etienne. Still some jawing going on. That's Israel Mukwamu talking it over with DeAndre Overton. Third down guy is back. What's up, Hampton? MacGyver. I think it's MacGyver. MacGyver's better. A win tonight would give Clemson their seventh undefeated regular season in school history. And they last had 12 and 0 starts in 1981. They got to go all the way back to about well, three years ago, 2015. ETM, the ball carrier. See, everybody's out of timeouts. We click under two minutes to play. In a two-score game, I'll let this uh, run all the way down, and then Dabo will have a decision to make: kick the field goal here to go up 17, or just run out the clock. But he'll he'll take a timeout and then have that conversation. Don't have a timeout. Oh, out of timeouts, yeah. They're just going to run the clock out. Let's take the five-yard penalty. Let's see, fourth down and three. Throwing for it, incompleting. Hunter Renfro still in the game. And another first down for Renfro and these Tigers. Will Muschamp's coaching to the last second as well. Good to the last drop. Oh, well, that'll do it. Now you can take a knee. Forty five seconds left in the game. Don't have to snap it for another 15, but they snap it right away. ETN for the touchdown. Another touchdown. And it's double nickel time for the second ranked Tigers. I'll tell you what was interesting before that play watching the coaches saying let's go get to the line let's go they want to run another play yeah, they want it's a rival man they wanted to score you know no doubt they're in that position you know as long as you're running the football will Muschamp can't have an issue with it but you got to stop him if you're going to run the ball right up the middle not much you can do Travis Etienne who was so frustrated one week ago 28 rushes 150 yards rushing tonight and two scores Jake Bentley again another opportunity with the football. Bentley's had himself a brilliant night. He's going to talk about a you know a career night, and he's going to have to say, oh, by the way, we lost. Maybe by 21. Well, he can hold his head high. No know, question. Uh, the last couple of times that uh, South Carolina has played Clemson, it has not gone well for Jake Bentley, and, and tonight he uh, he was not the reason that they lost. 
Jake Bentley's career high passing prior to tonight was 390 yards against USF a couple of years ago. And tonight, he's got 455 yards of passing, five touchdowns, and the one interception. It's a well-balanced Clemson team tonight. They've scored 14 points in every quarter. At least 14. And even 14. That's supposed to come on after our yes. game is so over. Right. They've taken their sweet time here in Clemson tonight. Been an interesting evening for Dabo. Get his thoughts with Todd immediately following this game. Speaking of Dabo, there's Debo. There's a Dabo and a Debo. Debo Samuels had himself a night. Already with three touchdown catches. And his effort meter is full. And that will put Bentley over. 500 yards passing. Just love that kid. Yes. I mean, every kid watching this game, South Carolina is not going to win, but you couldn't tell by the effort there from Sam. Bentley throwing. But Dowdle has the first down. And look at Bentley. Bentley wants another play. He wants one more chance. And, the clock's at, at zero. and here come the fans coming out on the field. Bentley's thinking that was a first down. Let's just stop the clock.